Hello! Oh my gosh, I don't have a vlogging voice anymore. It's been a long time. Holy crap, can I do this anymore? Welcome back to Lady Loves Books. This is a new edition. I've decided to change things up and not put it on my main channel, but now this will be a Lady Loves Book channel. Sorry, I'm a little tipsy. It's been a long week. Boop, boop, boop. Okay, but yeah, it's been a while since I vlogged and you know what? Let's let's multitask here. Let's do this while I am running errands. I need to pick up some stuff at the local Loblaw, so let's go. Okay, let's do it. Let's do it. A little after work drink. I know. <laughs> Sad. I don't care. It's delicious. The first book was Nella Larson's Passing. I like this book because I actually prefer this book over the movie. I think the movie did a really great job translating the author's vision. It was excellent. Movie and the book aligned. Passing is a story about one woman who, she is black by her ethnicity, but she could pass possibly for white. And it's a story about a friendship between a woman and her childhood friend who she sees later on who's completely living as a white woman. The perils and dangers that come with living in a sort of deceitful state of mind. The book was great because the book got into more details of the psyche of the main character. The movie was very subtle, but the book was really great at exhibiting how much anxiety and how stressful it is to walk the world in someone else's shoes, in shoes that don't belong to you. So I recommend passing. It's definitely, it's a short read, but it's worth it because it's a, a great book because you step into a world of self-preservation. Love said about passing. Definitely is a recommend. Definitely you should read. Okay. Driven by Ch Marcello Din Cintillo. Cintillo. Yeah, I can't say it. Cool. So, Driven was. It's a story about confessionals of taxi drivers in Canada. The author decided to come up to different cities within Canada, where he originally is from, to talk to different cab drivers about their experience with their past lives and why they became taxi drivers. Some became taxi drivers out of refugee status and they uh, came to Canada to make a better life for themselves. Others were just really terrible people who decided to drive taxis. It, was, it is what it is. What I learned from this book is that from certain regions in Canada where taxi services are like, for example, I think it was in Winnipeg or in basically Manitoba, you had a group of women, because they were being assaulted by taxi drivers, they decided to form their own ride sharing network. Very cool book, lots of interesting stories. Bling goes my book, shut up. I didn't love the book, but I definitely think there are a few stories that needed to be told and I learned a lot about um, the myth of taxi drivers we have in Canada is that all of them are like doctors and uh, all of their education is being reduced to nothing so that's why they have to drive cabs but he addresses that in the book and says actually it's a, that's a bit of a myth the cab drivers that he's met they come from all different walks of life and yeah my uncle was a cabbie before he passed away it was a wonderful way of life for him and yeah if you're interested in those kind of cab driver stories Definitely Driven was a good book. Okay, let's go. Ooh, 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 okay. The next book was The Circle by Dave Eggers. The timing of reading this book was phenomenal. Mae Holland is a young woman who was hired by this tech company, The Circle, to work in the organization, handle customer service, 
and do this type of stuff. And what happens from that point on shows and demonstrates how social media, forced social media, forced enthusiasm, working for these tech companies who are collecting data, how all this could actually ruin your life. I was, <laughs> I was reading this book. The timing of when reading this book was shortly before I started working in my tech role. And it's really, really interesting how he wrote this book so many years ago. It is like he had a crystal ball and could see what was happening in the future. Definitely would recommend The Circle. It will help you change the way you approach social media and technology, how there, there has to be a line that needs to be drawn and setting boundaries with using these types of apps and other applications. Okay, so Dave Eggers, I love some of your other books. This one was The Bomb. This was a great book, The Circle. Let's go side. The next book was Uncanny Valley by Anna Vina. This was an autobiography of Anna Wiener's time in Silicon Valley, like the late 2010s, and kind of piggybacks on Dave Egger's fictional interpretation of Silicon Valley, but it's actually a real, real occurrence. So Anna, who's a New Yorker, decides to move like to San Francisco and work in tech for a data company. It talks about her perils there. I wanna say, I appreciated that she never tried to pretend to be a feminist and she never really stood up for the rights of women in tech. She was part of the problem, but definitely would read this book because it's a really good account of what goes on in tech. And now, actually nobody knows what they're doing. <laughs> So, Uncanny Valley. Okay, the next book, Song of Achilles. Here's the thing with Song of Achilles. People were like, it's so sad, it's super tragic. It's a nice love story of, gosh, I can't even remember his name. Insert here. A young boy who basically murders another young boy and then ends up becoming sort of like an indentured servant to Achilles. Now, that young boy falls in love with Achilles in that kind of coming of age type of way. It's really innocent at first because it was really a deep friendship and he wasn't quite sure if Achilles was, you know, into him in that type of way. And then there was this discovery, there's war, very, very lovely Greek tragedy type of story, but told from a perspective that I didn't really think about. So definitely would recommend Song of Achilles. Some people thought it was really super sad and cried and bawled. It's sad, but it's manageable sad, you know? Five Carat Soul by James McBride. Like I like McBride's writing, but I found these short stories to be very depressing. They are very harsh and like, he tries with one to be a little bit like, I don't know, what is it called, magical realism? But they're intense. I didn't love this book. I didn't think this was his best book. It's not like King Kong, what was his face? I can't remember. That book was hilarious. This one, not so much. How the one-armed sister sweeps her house. This one is just like trauma out the gate. So much trauma. Like there's murder, there's abuse. It takes place in the Caribbean. There's a girl named Lala. She marries super young. She marries a criminal. This story was sad from the start. There's only like a moment of joy close at the end. But otherwise, this book is heavy AF. So you have to be in the right mindset to read it. But it was definitely a good read. Chiffon Trenches by Andre Leon Talley. Look, I love Andre Leon Talley. Like, I, I love him. I think he was 
Super important figure in fashion. And this book kind of left me wanting to tell him just, you know, shh, don't talk. It was gossipy. You know, he was talking about stuff that just didn't feel relevant anymore. He basically tried to big up people who really didn't give two shits about him because at the end of his life, you know, he was left penniless and this book was really finished the year he died. Like it basically, he died when it was published shortly afterwards. And it felt like a, a sort of a grab, like a bit of a desperate grab for him to still be on the good side of people who just didn't care about him. But he was a, an incredible man. I learned a lot about him with this book. Chiffon Trenches. Andre Leon Tele, you're a legend. Next book, Dopamine Nation by Anna Lebke. This book is a pass. But the only two things I learned from this book is one, therapists are chatty. Nobody likes a chatty therapist. And two, pain and pleasure come from the same point in the brain. That's it. Pass. Music is History by Questlove. I have such a crush on Questlove. He's so great. And this is a great book. If you love music and you love American music, New York, and all the things that come with that, it's a great book. I learned a lot in some of my favorite songs. He really got to the root of like where the samples are from and everything. So yeah. I would definitely recommend it as a read, for sure. Open your eyes. I need to wash my hands. Oh, I just touched my face. <laughs> so that was Lainey Love's books for the month of April. I didn't read as much as I normally do just because of my new job and yeah, the new job kind of <laughs> took over, but I really enjoyed the books I read this month, especially uh, the Circle by Dave Eggers, and followed up by Uncanny Valley. The other books as well were fantastic, the ones that I did recommend, the ones that didn't, you know, trash, go away. But that really did change how I'm using social media, how I am presenting myself online. You know, I rarely, I read a lot of books, but rarely have I read a book, especially in the last, um, I would say the last couple of months, that have actually completely changed how I behave in life, in the real world. So yeah, sushi is like trying to jump out of container. I will see you again next month. Thank you for joining me. This has been Lainey Love. This is Lainey Love's books. See you later, okay, bye.